No, dude, the SV650, it's got the pedigree, it's been racing for 20 years, it's clearly the best 650 class dude, bike. Dude, come on, I'm looking at the spec sheet right now, and the MT-07 has better numbers on the sheet. It doesn't it's... matter about the numbers on the sheet, the V-twin character. But you got this, you got the cross-plane twin, man, that's where it's at, you get that nice sound. You can do wheelies popping. just as easily on the hey, SV650. Hey, guys, did you guys know that there's a new uh, Triumph Trident? What? Doing the 650 class? The Triumph Triton is clearly no, the best on, 650 it's class the SV650. bike. It's 650. It's so much more. Classic. No, no, it's no. The, the Triton is the one that you want to. Alrighty everyone, this one's been a long time coming, possibly the most requested bike ever to be featured on the channel. This is our new giveaway Triumph Trident 660. It is Triumph's first attempt at a 650 entry level styled motorcycle. And these are so hot on dealerships, you literally can't find them anywhere. I have put this pre-order on this bike, I think six months ago, and it just showed up and it looks gorgeous in person. What do you think, Spice? I think this one's a really slick looking motorcycle. You can definitely tell it's a Triumph in the build quality. Everything down to the little Trident right here in the logo, you know, the, it feels classic Triumph to the dash, hand grips, all that stuff. The fit and finish is great on this thing. This is certainly one of those 650s that you could keep for a long, long time. Yeah, this thing is definitely a cut above the 650 class. We're gonna do a deep dive on this bike here today and take a closer look at it, but the fun doesn't end there. Let me go grab our other motorcycle we're featuring for this series. Yeah! Oh, come on, dude, a dual sport? WR250, you know no baby, yeah! No one cares about dual sports, I'm gonna man. make them care, God damn it! The WR250 is one of the greatest bikes of all time. Change my mind. I love this thing. All right, so here's the story behind the WR. Originally, we were gonna give this bike away. It was gonna be part of the series, but something kind of funny happened with me and this motorcycle and that I started riding it a whole lot and I started liking it a whole lot and I liked it so much that I looped it when I was wheeling it. <laughs> So I thought, you know what? I love this motorcycle so much that I've already binned it and wrecked it a little bit. So I am actually keeping this bike as a personal bike. And as a favor to you guys, I'm doing a second place prize on this giveaway for a $6,000 cash giveaway so that you can get your own WR and loop it if you want, or you can get whatever motorcycle you want as well. So we're gonna be featuring the WR as a beginner bike in the series and showing you guys how awesome this motorcycle is. But the second place prize for this sweepstakes is gonna be a $6,000 cash prize giveaway. So you can get whatever bike you want, or you could win the grand prize of the Trident over here, which is pretty sweet. But I'm super excited about the WR. And honestly, I might be a little bit more excited about the WR than the Trident, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> this bike's gonna be awesome, but let's take a closer look at the Trident and see what makes this bike so different and special in the 650 class. All right, guys, so as we mentioned, the Trident is a special motorcycle from Triumph because it's their first foray into an entry-level 650 class bike. And Spike, do you think the specs fit up to that class? It's a pretty competitive class. It's a pretty competitive class, and this one is kind of like a big muscly Hercules there because it's putting down 80 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of torque out of its 660cc engine. They actually hit that one right on the nose. And it's a three-cylinder, which is special. Yeah, I mean, We're that's- not talking 180-degree P-twins or anything like that. This is a three-cylinder, very cool. So you're gonna get that classic inline three note. It's gonna sound really nice and meaty. Mm -hmm. And it weighs 417 pounds wet, which is right in line with all the other bikes in this category. So it is a little bit faster. So it's it, you gotta manage it a little bit. But you actually, for you guys across the pond, you can get a learner approved version of this 
with a restrictor kit that'll get it right in about 47-ish horsepower, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Yeah, and the best part of all is you get this fantastic looking motorcycle. It's got a cool TFT-ish dash here at the bottom. Actually, this is not a TFT. It's just got a little display and then the tachometer up top here. Mm -hmm. And it's all for about $7,995, which is just, it's like they're literally coming for the MT-07's throat. Yeah, absolutely. And Fit and finish wise, there is no comparison. No. This thing is so <laughs> much better than an MT-07. Yeah. I mean, just the throttle feel alone is gonna have that, you know, nice classic triumph feel where it's mm -hmm. just the, the fueling is buttery smooth. Yeah. The switch gear is nice up here. And I mean, just looking at the way they tuck the wires into the motorcycle, you mm -hmm. can tell it was built with care. Yeah, optional quick shifter as well you can install on this motorcycle, which is a really cool feature. Uh, the specifications up at the front is a Showa front suspension, which is pretty different than your MT-07s and stuff like that. Only the CBR650 and the CB650Rs have a Showa front end, so that's pretty cool. The brakes are pretty much part and parcel for the category here. You get these non-radially mounted Nissans at the front, so you're gonna get pretty decent stopping power. But I really think this bike is gunning for the fact that it just looks classically beautiful. Mm -hmm. This single Single round headlight, good proportions, stumpy little tail. This is your classic Street Fighter naked style motorcycle. Would you go so far as to call it a neo retro bike though? That's tough. I mean, maybe it's got like this flair of retro, flair of modern. I think that this is such a good looking motorcycle that anyone would be proud to own oh, yeah. it. I don't think For anyone sure. would look at this and be like, no, I don't want that bike. It's yellow. I don't want the RS660. I don't want that one. Like this one is, <laughs> it's great. Anyone looks at this and they think, wow, that's a fantastic looking motorcycle. Um, we're actually going to do a couple mods to it, I think. But since it is a brand new bike, there's not that much stuff available for it just yet. But what would you like to do to it first? What do you think? Oh man, if we could get an exhaust so we could hear it a little yeah. bit more, that would be really nice. I mean, you gotta listen to that triple sing. So yeah. that would be great. I'd like to clean up this tire hugger a little bit just to make it a little bit cleaner here on mm -hmm. the back end. Although the tire hugger is a better option over a long like whale tail hanging off the back here. Yeah, I, so. I do like those more just cause you get to see the tail and it's nice and stumpy looking and it just kind of cleans up the whole aesthetic of the bike. Um, but it's really fun for me as a four-time Daytona owner to look at this thing and see the, the little similarities here and there. Like these foot pegs are straight from the Daytona. Mm -hmm. Some of the cases here are the same. Cause as you guys know, this engine is derived from the original Street Triple 765. It's down tuned a lot on power. The cams are different. Everything about it's really different. So you can't just slap an ECU flash and make 128 <laughs> horsepower out of this thing. But it's got that character and charm that a lot of the Triumph triples deliver. Um, but this thing, I mean, compared to an MT-07, it's just a joke. Like, it's so much nicer oh, than an yeah. MT-07. Um, it's it, fantastic. I can't wait to get out and ride it just to feel it. And definitely, we should do a back-to-back MT-07 Trident comparison. Maybe even bring in an SV650 just for giggles because... I mean, I have a feeling this is going to take a big dunk on all of them. Yeah, um, one of the best things about this bike is it comes equipped from the factory with Pilot Road 5, so the Michelin tire, which is great. You're not talking some garbage Dunlop OEM that you're gonna have to swap out anyways. This is a long lasting, great tire that you can keep on this bike for 10,000 miles and not even worry about it, which is awesome to see at this price point. Um, so we are super thrilled about the Triumph Trident. Tons of content coming out about it. But now, what do you say we indulge on our dual sport boy fetishisms and look at the WR. Yeah, let's do that. Alright everyone, and now we are talking about the WR250R, one of the most famous and infamous motorcycles on the internet. You'll see these popping wheelies everywhere, doing crazy off-road stuff. These are literally one of the most ubiquitous motorcycle platforms, and that is for good reason. They're lightweight, cheap, they run forever, and they're pretty freaking awesome to ride. Spike, specs on this bad boy? So, this one, you're gonna think it's not a real bike because it's only putting down 30 horsepower and about 18 foot-pounds of torque out of its 250cc, 249cc single cylinder. But, I mean, it is a dual sport. It's got a top speed of only 86 miles an hour, and you're not meant to be taking it up. You're not ringing it out the whole way. This is really just a massive trail-carving motorcycle, and you've got all the specs on the suspension, right? I do, yeah. So it's got a 46-millimeter fully adjustable set of forks up at the front. 
um, which is really awesome. You also have a fully adjustable rear shock at the back, so this motorcycle can be dialed into your preference, whether you're riding it on-road, off-road, 50-50, whatever you're doing. And that's always been the WR's kind of kick against most other motorcycles is that the specification on this bike is pretty high relative to other beginner bikes. Mm -hmm. And as we said, that engine, despite it only making 30 horsepower, this thing weighs 295 pounds, ready to ride 300-ish if you want to be a little bit unfair to the WR here. And it actually punches pretty good out of corners and feels really fun to ride. This thing, as I mentioned, since I looped it, flicks wheelies pretty easily. Um, it's a lot of fun to ride and it's just a very playful and intuitive motorcycle to get familiar with as well. Features a 21 inch setup, 18 rear as well, which is your typical trail bike setup. Um, this is a motorcycle that in my opinion, if you are tall enough and you're willing to get into the dual sport life, will teach you so much about riding motorcycles. You can learn to wheelie with it, jump with it, slide with it, ride on the road with it. I feel like there's basically no downside to this machine other than the fact that it's top speed kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's dashboard is, is a little ancient, but I mean, I say that and my $12,000 Supermoto has a dash that's only marginally better. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the, I get, whether that's a condemnation on KTM or the WR is a praise, I'm not sure, but I mean, this boat motorcycle is one of those that's almost, uh, it's always the other motorcycle in comparisons. Yeah. DRZ versus WR, CRF versus WR. It's always the other part of the versus in that equation. And I mean, it's one of these motorcycles that you always think about when you see dual sport in your head. You always come back to this picture. Yeah. And I mean, it's fuel injected, man. That's so good nowadays. So big in the dual sport world. You don't have to worry about this thing. And beyond that, this thing has valve checks every 22,000 miles. If you buy this thing new, you're literally never gonna check the valves. Let's be real. And if you have to, you pop out the gas tank, there's four valves because it's a single sill, and you're done. Yeah. It's literally bare bones simple to ride and maintain. And the other thing about it too is that because this bike has such a cult following, people know everything about these bikes. You go on mm -hmm. forums, on bumper talk, whatever you want, Everybody knows anything about the WR. You can get a rally tank for it, windscreen, bark busters, different tire setups, different wheel setups, do supermoto conversions to it. I mean, the, the list just never ends with these bikes. Yeah, I mean, that's the crazy thing about dual sports is because they don't change all that much through the years, they're really easy to just do whatever you want to. Oh my God, it's a breeze working on this bike. Yeah. I already had to swap the handlebar and the tail tidy because again, I looped it <laughs> and it, it took me like an hour to do everything. It was so easy. I didn't even have to look at instructions. It was so intuitive and simple to do stuff too. It's and awesome. the parts are cheap. They're so cheap. <laughs> the, the parts are so cheap on these motorcycles. And one of the cool things that I noticed is Yamaha actually did a good and put the case protector on the engine. Mm -hmm. You actually have to, on the DRZ, you have to go get yourself another case protector and JB weld it to the side of your engine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nice to see that from the factory. And it, you know, in terms of dual sport fit and finish, this is great. Yeah, I think it looks really good. The fit and finish is there. And it's funny looking at the frame compared to the DRZ's frame and you're like, wow, this is a spaceship, you know? <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's no, no tube steel construction. I mean, it's, it's a real sophisticated motorcycle. Yeah, if you're an entry level rider, you're trying to get into the dirt, the WR may be just the best place you can possibly start. Uh, don't get in your own head about it and look on the forums and be like, no, it's too heavy, you're not gonna have fun, it's not a KTM, it's not good enough. This is plenty good enough for you to get out there and learn and ride off road and do anything you need to do. And if you need more proof than that, you can watch videos of WR riders doing absolutely crazy things with these bikes. I've seen WR riders doing things that they should not be able to do with these bikes. Yeah, these bikes just will billy goat their way up mountains if you want them to. I mean, yeah. It's basically indestructible and unkillable. Yeah. I saw a guy take one of these out to the motocross track and have fun with it. I mean, you can do anything you want with these bikes. They're, yeah. they're awesome. And as I mentioned, this was a bike that I was actually very interested in buying myself a few years ago. And then we got our giveaway DRZ in 2019 and it really gave me the dual sport bug. And I've never really stopped thinking about the WR. Spite here can attest that every other week or so, I'll just out of nowhere just start simping for the WR because I still think about it. And it was one of those things where as soon as I rode it, it just felt right and I just wanted to keep riding it. And our camera person, Whitney, even was saying that I was gonna keep it and the whole thing just felt like <laughs> destiny. And then I looped it and now it's mine, I guess. <laughs> 
So, as we mentioned, as a concession to you guys out there in Streamland and YouTube and everywhere else, um, you know, we're not going to be giving this bike away because it was already crashed. We're going to be doing a second place $6,000 cash prize. So you can get yourself whatever motorcycle you want. But stick around for this series. It's going to be awesome with the Trident and the WR. We're going to be having a lot of fun with these motorcycles. And uh, yeah, sign up on yamanube.co or yamanubemerch.com. Get your entries to win these fantastic motorcycles and our cash prize. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yammy Noob. 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 Keep watching Yammy Noob.